once a year, it's time to go on a unique journey. A journey to the heart of the textile trade. The Heim Textile in Frankfurt. Your journey to the wow of textiles. On your way, you will meet people from all over the world who get together driven by the same strong feeling they all feel at the beginning of each year. They are driven by the power of textiles. The commitment for sustainability. Textile circularity. The joy of new international contacts and the hunger for new knowledge. Join the wow. The trends the inspiration, the business opportunities, the lectures, talks and tours, the fun, the excitement and of course join your old friends and new business partners. Shake hands and shake the business, feel the textiles and feel the magic. Touch trends and touch tomorrow. Weave your network and weave your future. Join the journey to meet, greet, feel and deal. Join the fair and add to the excitement. Join the wow at Heim Textile. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Heim Textile Trend Preview. Um, we are live at our press center right on the fairgrounds of Messe Frankfurt, so some of you probably recognize the background already. Now, today we take a glimpse into the future, and I think we get quite a good idea of how the um, change within the home textile industry um, can look like. Um, so it's all about breaking grounds and developing a vision of transformation. Now with me in the press center is a very familiar face. Uh, all of you know her, it's Anja Biscard. She is the founder of Home Trends on Business. With us as well is Lauren Davis. She is a senior strategist um, by Franklin Tills. And of course, a familiar face, all of you know, Olaf Schmidt um, from Messe Frankfurt, Vice President Textiles and Textile Technology. Now, Zach is Brustek, uh, he's a new face to you as well. He kind of lead us through the trend preview and the discussion today. Zach is, is a well-known face in the German market. Um, he has a, a podcast on sustainability and is highly committed on all the questions of SDG and uh, sustainability as well. So before we get started, just a few information for you. We're going to have a press kit for you available on the website and we're going to also record the session so you can have a look at it afterwards as well if you need uh, further details. We also answer all your questions, so you can actually um, enter them via the chat already now if you have questions. We're going to concentrate in the live session on the questions regarding the trends only, so that Anya and Lauren can answer them here live. All the other questions we are going to answer afterwards. Now, I think everyone is eager to learn about the trends, and that's why I hand over to, to Zakis. Thanks a lot, Yvonne. Uh, welcome, Lauren. Great to have you on board. Hi, Anya. Hi. Dear Olaf. I'm very excited to be part of this press conference because as many industries out there, almost any industry, the home textile industry is a spot where the discussion is not only what the future of business will look like, but also the question on how you want to get there. How can you not only provide inspiration, create innovation, but also play your part in creating a sustainable future for the industry. So it's not only about previewing trends, but it is really about the question, how can we enable the transition to that sustainable future? A transition, let's be honest, that most for us, if we're involved in global supply chains, catering to global audience or markets, might feel like moving on a three-dimensional chessboard, a board that is being created while we actually move along. So I think it's really important that you know exactly where you are on that board, that you're transparent about your status quo, that you engage with other players on that board, you share knowledge, and you really collectively and together find answers on what the future 
will look like. And for that to happen, you really need a space and a forum where you can come together, pool that knowledge, engage in that discussion. And that is exactly one leading theme of Heim Textile. And hence, Olaf will really dive into why that is such an integral part of the show. Olaf. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Sakes. And uh, also on behalf of Messe Frankfurt and especially on behalf of the home of the whole Heimtech Sea team, a warm welcome also from my side. And perhaps you know September is the month we always kick off the Heimtech Steel trend season. And it's also the countdown to the next event here in January. Exactly Heimtech Steel take place from 9 to 12 of January here in Frankfurt uh, at this wonderful venue in the middle of the city. And before we deep dive into this year's trend theme, of course, I would like to underline why we as Heimtech Steel invest in upskilling and knowledge transfer with the Heimtech Steel trend. Of course, we are a um, fair organizer exhibition company and we bring the right people at the right place together and, of course, we unable business contacts. But what is really, impos uh, really important for us is that we deliver significant conte content with our shows, not only from the trend side, also with other topics here at Heimtech Steel next year. And to see developments from different perspective is our target and especially within the textile industry, one of the globally most connected one, we think valuable content and exchange is crucial and to get ready for the future and also to shape opportunities and to drive transformative textile innovations. And this is why the high-taxi trends here in Frankfurt are highly valued by our international participants. So next year, we're looking forward to welcome visitors and exhibitors from around 120 countries worldwide. And the trend I can see, I can say is a heart and also the USP of high textile for many, many years. And the trend not only present uh, aesthetical trends, of course, but center the content about innovation, materials, and also market developments. And it's about translating mega trend based on uh, research and international analysis. And you can see this here in Frankfurt at Heimtextil. And the result uh, are hand on guidelines for retailers, business owners, as well for product designers. And we bring exactly these results like colors, guidelines, workshops, products to life at the fair in a very unique on-site experience. Exactly the name is the trend space here at Heimtech Steel the next year, this presentation will be in Hall 3.0. And this is for all textile professionals who are interested in the fields of design, production, new materials, of course, and also retail. So I think a very impressive uh, presentation. And I think what we are doing very um, successfully is simplifying complexity because when a visitor is here in Frankfurt, he would like to get state-of-the-art information and this is possible with the trends for 2024-2025. Thanks a lot, Ola. I was told last year's trend we're already focusing on circularity. Now I had the pleasure of having a sneak preview into the trend booklet on new sensitivity. Of course, I spotted it is again about transformative textile innovations. So what kind of role does the underlying reoccurring theme of sustainability play for the industry? Yeah, I, I can say sustainability has been a key topic at the Heim Taxi Trends for many, many years. So we have with the Material Manifesto uh, a very clear statement to have a sustainable presentation here in Frankfurt. Um, so what is Material Manifesto? So we are looking to work with recycled material to reduce waste, to work with local suppliers and also with rented material to take material from the stock. So I can say really the whole textile presentation at the trend space is really sustainable. And also with the future materials uh, created by the London-based uh, agency Franklin Till under the title Regenerative, as well as the lectures and talks, I think these are very sustainable presentations here in Frankfurt. And also the new sensitivity, the trend theme for 2024-2025 is based on the Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs. And we as Messe Frankfurt, we work together 
Office for Partnership and the Conscious Fashion and Lifestyle Network since 2019. It's a very good partnership um, and uh, our target is uh, to on inform on our textile shows worldwide, our 50 textile shows worldwide about the SDGs uh, and how, yeah, I can say how we can make perhaps the textile industry also a little more sustainable in the future. And this is also part of the presentation here in January next year here in Frankfurt. And now, of course, I'm very excited to learn more about the trends 2024-2025 uh, from Anja and also from Loreen. Thanks a lot, Olaf, for having joined us to kick off the press conference. Thank I'm you. also very excited now to slowly um, come to Anja and Lauren's input. Both really have hand-on examples showcasing this year's or the upcoming trend, new sensitivity, and of course, future materials, which will center on the concept of regenerative. The Trend Area, the Future Materials um, exhibition, of course, will be a highlight of Heim Textile in January 2000, uh, 2024. And I guess a lot of you are really looking forward to engage on site. Um, but you do not actually have to wait that long. You can already get inspired digitally. So make sure after the press conference in the coming weeks, days, months, um, you have to have a look at all the text, the images, um, the colors, all of that will, of course, be available on the Heim Textile website. Now, um, as Yvonne earlier said, at the end of the press conference, we of course will um, come to your questions. So make sure as we move through the presentations to already submit your questions in that chat, that we have a nice pool of questions to choose from by the end of the press conference. Well, we'll start with the main theme, the trend of the upcoming season, New Sensitivity. We'll start hands with Anja Bisgard, founder of Spot Trends and Business. Um, Spot, of course, has been part of the Heim Textile Trend Council, along with two other agencies, Franklin Till and with the Style Institute. And actually, this year, they've been in the lead to create New Sensitivity as a trend. Not only that, they've also been responsible for the development and the implementation in not only the trend booklet, but also the trend space. And Anja herself actually has been the chief editor of the trend booklet. So I think you know Anja already. You're quite familiar with her. We can expect um, certainly the best insights from her personally. But I also know that um, I think most of you are expecting color palettes, aesthetic universes. Um, but as Olaf already mentioned, the underlying theme really is transition and transformation. So be warned. Since that is the underlying theme, it's not so much about the end goal and um, probably ex knowing exactly where we will end up, but as any transformation and transition, the process is really key and paying attention to that. Hence, the narrative around new sensitivity might sound different than what you used to in previous years. I'm personally very excited about it because that means how things come into being, materials and colors, of course, how they stay with us during their use phase and where they move on after their end of life is already informing the shapes and the colors these materials take. So all of that is encompassed in new sensitivity. But Anja can talk more about that much more eloquently than myself. <laughs> Anja, take it from here. Thank you very much, Zach. Thank you. And thank you to the whole of uh, Heim Textile for having me again on board this um, program for the Heim Textile Trends. It's a huge honor. Um, and it's a privilege to be able to come here and, and present things. It's a big uh, release. We just talked about this earlier this morning to showcase everything that we've been working on for the past months. So let's move into uh, looking at uh, the Heim Textile Trends 24-25 of what it is that we have been focusing on and the concept. It's just going to be a short presentation. So as mentioned, please dive into it with um, the website and the booklet. There'll be plenty of more images and information to deep dive into than we can reach uh, within this hour we have um, today. 
So let's begin to see, we're talking about, yes, this transformation from trends being the driver to transformation being the driver. So we are approaching these trends as we've done for previous years a little bit different. Um, so we're looking into addressing really change at scale and looking into how can we actually do that, looking into how we can then look at things from not only the aesthetical side. And so we're focusing very much on textile innovation under this headline of new sensitivity. So what is um, new sensitivity? So this is an approach that we've been looking into um, and it's been this driver for the Heimtech Steel Trends concept of 2425. Um, and also I said, we're looking into that behind this is really these SDGs that was introduced in 2015 that has been a significant driver for businesses and policies, legislation turning into a different kind of era that is really influenced by new sensitivity and bias sensitivity approach. But the current state of the world still also says that we still have a long way to go. So there is quite a lot of work also to do, but also and also within the home textiles uh, sector. So we really want to support this and we really want to focus on that, showing this kind of transformation that we're looking into. It's not only within home textiles, this new sensitivity is actually a broader um, perspective and just to be inspired by that we really want to look into how new sensitivity impacts much broader uh, in architecture in policies in legislation uh, with these kind of more considerate outlook so new sensitivity is mostly related to you know touch and feel and that's also relevant within the home textile sector and also relevant for new sensitivity but it's also in regards to consideration it's about showing respect when you're making a decision or when you are producing a product, what is its function? What is its purpose? What is its life cycle? How does it work? And these are just some of the examples that we have uh, for that and showcasing how broadly new sensitivity is actually focusing. It can be product design that looks into handling um, climate changes. It can be architecture. It can be digital well-being. It can be retail architecture that focuses on upcycled products. It can be a plant that can help um, the increase indoor pollution. So it's really a lot of different uh, kinds of examples that we have. And going broadly from the more personal side, um, mental well-being, but also on physical, physical products and the surroundings that we go into. So a considerate outlook, sympathetic regard, solidarity approach is what we're looking for when we're looking into what new sensitivity is about um, more broadly. So also going a little bit closer into the trends, we've also made, you know, of course, our colors. Um, so we were looking for how colors, we can still look into colors that evoke emotions, but still respecting our values and environment. Um, so we're looking into how we can actually go with that. And we're continuing, of course, these natural uh, color pigments that we've been working on for several years, also looking into and accepting these natural color flows. But we're also looking into more technology-based, like bioengineered colors, where we can actually mimic nature, looking into nature from its atomic level and still be able to create also nature's very vivid and diverse hues. So it's not only these more subdued uh, colors that we have. So we've created this color scale of 16 colors where we look into both some vivid saturated accents, but also some more subdued and calm tranquility uh, colors of some of the purples and this deep petroleum color that we have. And then of course also being inspired by some of the more plant-based orientations that we also have within these textile innovations that we're focusing on with these more khakis and these yellow harvest uh, inspired colors. On the website, you'll also find four key colors that is in focus um, with this um, color scale. So moving into more on new sensitivity in the world of home textiles. So what is really one of the key points here is that textile production is taking a new starting point. So where does it start? It starts from the very fibers. It starts from these uh, different places of where textile can, can go. And we've tried to simplify this because it's a rather complex area of understanding uh, to simplify it and put it into three different categories because it goes both into bioengineered, it goes into plant, 
plant-based, that is crop-based. It can be also more technologically driven of where our textiles will actually come from um, in the future. And this is where we're seeing it's imperative that we look at composition as much as also looking at uh, aesthetics. But really, where is textile coming from in the future? It will be different and it's going to be important to have um, this understanding. So we have in, tried to look it into three different kinds of categories of where we can kind of categorize these new textile innovations to have an easier uh, understanding of where textile is coming from. So we're seeing uh, plant-based textiles, we're seeing bioengineered textiles, and we're seeing technological um, textiles. So, and we've then chosen textiles to be featured within the trend concept that is um, having an innovative approach approach and having this sensitivity approach, showing consideration to what kind of role it fills, what kind of function it fills, how it's circular and how it has it an end of life uh, circle. So that is really what we are, are looking into. So living up to these also sustainability requirements that we're working on and also a little bit more upscale uh, is something that we would like some, some kind of scalability in order to really have an impact and transform um, this industry. So let's have a look at the plant-based textiles. So this was this neo plant that actually can help reduce indoor pollution by being uh, bio-engineered. Um, when we're looking at plant-based textiles, we're looking at from two different angles. We're looking at from plant byproducts or from plant crop products. So really it's about plants that comes either from soil or it comes from a product that is being produced, a crop, and then we're using its, by, its byproduct. So we're looking into also plants that has more resilient and more climate resilient in, in a ways that it can actually work and thrive in the conditions that we're seeing um, around uh, the world. So what we are seeing in different areas, it can come from many different places. It can be hemp, for example. It can also be banana fibers, as we're seeing here. It can also be bamboo as some different examples of these more crop-based, plant-based textiles we're having here. We can also see in that it's uh, more of a byproduct, for example, from the olive uh, industry, persimmon, or even cactus that's showing really a, a resilient also plant crop that we can create these more alternative um, vegan textiles, alternatives um, to leather. Or even persimmon is also something that we are looking into with these plant-based um, textiles. A second category is our bio-engineered uh, area, where we're looking into bridging technology and nature. Um, so we're really working on both, uh, both these uh, areas and looking into how we can engineer nature to create some of these new textiles and working from nature from its very anatomic um, level. So we have these 100% biodegrade or bio-engineered um, textiles, but we also have some where we're working with more conventional textiles that's enhancing biodegradable um, properties of the textiles, which is really helpful also where we are right now um, in the transition. So looking into these bioengineered textiles, some of these different examples where we're seeing um, products coming from proteins, coming from bacteria, celluloses, uh, processes, coming from mycelium, uh, coming from uh, also just starch or any kind of carbohydrates is what we are seeing, these different and new kinds of textiles coming from. So it's really a new composition of where textile can derive from and we're seeing that some of these uh, innovations are really becoming uh, more scalable as we speak. The second direction that we have within bioengineered is what we call these more bioenhanced, biodegradable engineered. That's a little bit more complex, but it's actually working with regular polyesters and making them, adding some biodegradable spots that when they end up in landfill or in the ocean, when they are in contact with natural environments, they can actually biodegrade to a larger, larger extent uh, than what we've seen before with some of these uh, regular polyesters. So that's really also interesting and helpful in this transition of where we are uh, with textiles in the future. 
So the third one is technological textiles, um, and this has many different kinds of approaches. Um, we're looking into how technology is supporting, helping. This can be upcycling, recycling um, approaches. It can be textile construction. It can also be reviving old craft techniques to look for and support a more sustainable textile um, production. What we're seeing here is a, is a textile that can actually help decrease energy usage by actually reflecting um, the sun when it's used as a windscreen uh, technology or windscreen textile. Other solutions is that we're looking into weaving techniques that use less colors or we're exploring how uh, knitting instead of weaving can help upholstery, make less waste in the production of that, or upcycling um, leftover textile uh, scraps, surplusing, making them as new aesthetical um, approaches. Then we also have as a final one here, looking into, of course, recycling textiles. That's also been a big thing for some years, and that's still also part of these technological textiles approach that we have. Um, but an interesting feature is also how we can see that window textiles can actually also harvest um, energy and then help us recast that sun and then make it uh, useful in the future. So many different uh, ways of methodologies to look into how technology can help and assist textiles um, in the future. So this was just a brief short introduction to the trend concept of 2425. I really encourage you to download the booklet and explore the Heimtexel website for so much more. There is images and there is much more telling. There is videos um, to see, uh, uh, also to explore for you. A huge thanks to my team. I've not done this myself at all. It requires a lot of uh, talented people. So thank you very much um, to them for helping me putting uh, all this um, together. So thank you very much also to Heimtech Steel. Thanks a lot to you, Anya. I already have so many questions about the genesis of new sensitivity. I'll save it though, because yeah. of course, first uh, we want to complete the picture with future materials. I hope you do have also a lot of questions, so make sure to type away in the chat already so that we have a nice set of questions for the end of the press conference. Now, where Anya was talking about um, the general transformation dynamics informing new sensitivity and translating into colors and aesthetics, Lauren will actually dive deeper into the foresight of how this transition will materialize. Interesting, Anya mentioned that um, she was talking actually about change at scale already. So a lot of the concepts that popped up quickly on the screen are things that can already be rolled out on a much larger scale. Um, Lauren's job as um, senior strategist with Franklin Till and Franklin Till being in the lead for future materials, of course, is to go even a step ahead and to see what's beyond the horizon. We heard new sensitivity is largely informed also by the SDG. If we're honest and we look out there, we know that net zero is not going to cut it. So those individuals, companies who come up with concepts that help us to regenerate the planet will actually do that step that we all need to collectively get there. And this is the outset for future materials. But Lauren Davis has much more to say about that than I do. Lauren, please take it from here. Thank you, Sarkis. So hi, yeah, I'm Lauren Davis. I'm a senior strategist at Franklin Till, a futures research agency working with global brands and organizations to explore and implement design, material, and color innovation for a more sustainable future. And to date, the way we design and make the products and services that support our everyday lives has had a detrimental effect on people and planet. As the building blocks of design, we believe that colour and material innovation can lead us toward a future in which people and planet can flourish. We exist to support brands and organisations to play an active role in improving and restoring the world around them. This idea is central to the Future Materials exhibit this year, which I will introduce you to after giving an insight into the work we do at Franklin Till. We're passionate about bringing research to life through writing books such as Radical Matter, a publication exploring the incredible variety of revolutionary thinkers, experimental approaches and new materials and models of production and consumption within the world of design. We produce publications which have included Viewpoint Colour and Viewpoint Design and major exhibitions such as Our Time on Earth at the Barbican Gallery in London celebrating the power of global creativity to transform the conversation around the climate emergency by inviting us to listen, feel and connect with the natural world. We also work with global brands and organisations to support them to shift to more sustainable practices and with companies at the cutting edge of sustainable and circular innovation 
supporting them to tell their material stories to global audiences, such as the work pictured here that we have been doing with Tarquette to celebrate the beauty of circularity. We've had the pleasure of working with Heim Textile for a number of years now. We've developed the Future Materials exhibit that presents the most exciting material innovations within interior and textile design. And last year, as the lead agency, we directed the trend space Textiles Matter, in which we place full emphasis on exploring the sustainable gen agenda with textiles, interior design and materials. We're really excited to be returning to in January 2024 with a similar but fresh approach and perspective, exploring a particular development within the sustainable agenda. We present to you the Regenerative Materials Exhibit. In this era of climate emergency, we're beginning to look beyond sustainability to regenerative design. But what does this really mean and how do we define regenerative textiles and materials? Let me first give you a bit of context. It's now impossible to, to ignore that it's human acts that are having a catastrophic impact on the planet. We're finally becoming aware of the damage caused by current systems of design, manufacture and consumption to the planet and its people. The great acceleration published by International Geosphere Biosphere Programme maps socio-economic trends against Earth system trends and conveys that acceleration in human changes are inextricably linked to Earth system changes. And a bit of doom and gloom, as the reality of the climate crisis is sadly no longer a future concept. For example, June 2023 was the hottest June on record according to NASA's global temperature analysis. Recently, we've seen devastating flooding in Pakistan and many other countries, as well as wildfires raging across the world. Earth Overshoot Day marks a date when humanity's demand for ecological resources and services in a given year exceeds what Earth can regenerate in that year. In 2023, Earth Overshoot Day landed on August 2nd. We maintain this deficit by liquidating stocks of ecological resources and accumulating waste. All industries, including the textile industry, have a role to play in reconsidering our systems of production and consumption. To this point, the emphasis has been on sustainability and how we can adopt practices to maintain what we have. However, the impact we are having on the planet conveys that we need to go a step further and beyond maintaining the status quo. Last year's Hind Textiles Textiles Matter focused on circularity, in which we keep materials in closed loop systems and effectively leave no trace. Circularity is part of the approach needed. However, we need to go beyond that and towards regeneration where we heal, restore and put back better. Regenerative design is a term that's gaining traction across the globe with a desire to explore and use regenerative materials. However, what does this term actually mean? How do we ensure that this is meaningful, a meaningful design approach that is widely understood and accessible? We do this by restoring ecosystems, reuniting divided communities and enhancing the health of people, planet and place. Looking to provide a de definition of what this actually means, Heim Textile Future Materials Exhibit 2024, for this we're putting together a global showcase of cutting-edge regenerative textiles, materials and solutions to illustrate the principles of regenerative design. In past years, we've focused mainly on fibre composition, raw material, being, um, raw material and process of transformation. This year, we'll tell social stories as well about lives being enriched as well as environmental regeneration, highlighting not just what materials are made of, but how they are made and who they are made by. By celebrating the pioneering designers, producers, manufacturers and brands at the forefront of this thinking, we can facilitate and accelerate change, enabling both people and planet to flourish. These are the nine principles we have identified through ongoing research. Within each pillar, we have three exhibitors, so 27 exhibits altogether. I'll dive a bit deeper into the philosophy of two of them on the following slides and then share an exhibitor within each. In enriching communities, we celebrate those whose work has a strong focus on social regeneration to create thriving communities with improved livelihoods. In the work of designer Fernando Lapos, people take centre stage. He often works with indigenous communities in his native Mexico to create local employment opportunities and raise awareness about the challenges they face in a globalised world. His handcrafted functional art and interior pieces are designed with locally sourced natural materials such as Sissel, cochineal natural dye, 
corn husk leaves and loofah. Microbial innovation, one of our other pillars, highlights avant-garde materials grown using microbes. Through working in symbiosis with living systems, bountiful materials can be manufactured in a low-impact way, favouring innovation over consumptive and extractive processes that deplete our natural resources. Moving Pigment by Charlotte Worth aims to scale up and automate the process of co-designing textile patterns with pigment producing bacteria, enlarging and making, invis making visible the incredible beauty of this parallel microscopic world, whilst also providing a vib vibrant alternative for toxic, polluting sy synthetic dye. Together, our nine pillars and their pioneering design solutions and materials weave a story of hope and possibility for the textile industries and as a result people and planet too. The message we aim to share is one of innovation, infinite potential and positivity. We really look forward to sharing the rest of the Future Materials exhibits when Heim Textile 2024 opens in January. Thank you. Thanks a lot Lauren and I'm very excited because now I'll have the pleasure of actually um, talking to you for at least um, 10 minutes, 15 minutes and asking a little bit more detailed questions. Afterwards, we'll dive into um, the official Q&A. But um, if we start here, um, to me it seems um, new sensitivity is sort of a seasonal trend, the upcoming trend, but also informed by a much more long-term transition and sort of an iteration of a theme that has been here already. So what are sort of the key drivers that culminate really in the seasonal trend of new sensitivity? Anya. Yes. Um, well, new sensitivity is also sustainability, but it's also so much more and it's really putting a focus on that narrative and the storytelling of also this changed mindset that we need to go because to me it is broader it's about understanding also that we need solidarity we need to understand and have this consideration and respect for the systems around us understand that each other technology and nature are interlinked and what we do with technology what we do with nature what we do to each other is connected and affecting each other and vice versa and new sensitivity is really trying to grasp that and have that understanding and also saying yes net zero is not enough um, but we definitely need to start there and then go way further than that what i like is that solidarity can really go two ways it it can mean going outgoing with communities with society but it also could be seen within the industry because it probably is a transition that we the industry can really only move through if people work on it together, collaborate and yes. tackle it together. Definitely. Collaboration is key um, because no one can do this alone. Um, just, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just a quick follow-up question yeah. there because Olaf said at the beginning also one of the biggest job of Heim Textile is to simplify complexity. Now, if I look at textiles and how they're coming to being, the whole process behind it, the things that have to be considered over the whole life cycle, and even if we work in closed loops, just make it so much more complex as a starting point, I guess, than it was a while ago. So have you found a way to also simplify that development? Yes, well, looking into and going into the researches, of course, about how we are communicating and the choice of making these uh, different kinds of categories. I know that there were innovations and textiles out there that maybe go into two of the categories, but it was a way to um, let's say, let's start here and let's see how we can categorize things. But it's also a, f a thing we're going to work a little bit with AI, also with the trend space coming up and having AI maybe as a, as a point into this of how it can maybe help us understand and reduce uh, complexity by explaining things in, in simpler ways. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll save that AI question for a little yeah. bit um, to build a little suspense here, um, but also to include you, Lauren. And now, um, Anya already mentioned sustainability is sort of the status quo or the goal we thrive to at the moment, but actually we also should be thinking of regenerative materials already. So how do you really distinct both? So sustainability is about maintaining the status quo, as you said. It's about um, making things less bad, whereas regenerative materials, regeneration, re regenerative design is about reversing that ecological and social impacts of design. 
Now, if I imagine I'd be listening as um, maybe even a machine park producer, as a textile producer, somewhere um, up the supply chain, how could I shift towards regenerative practices? What would that mean for suppliers or producers? So it's a bit more about a behavior change. It's about viewing materials as dynamic and not static objects to shift, you know, the shift of thinking about um, materials as constantly, in constantly living, constantly evolving and living systems. Um, and to understand the full system of design and manufacture from raw material to harvesting, to that process and transformation, to then the life, the actual life cycle, and then the end of life and what it can be regenerated in its, into in its next life. Um, and I think that we have to shift away from thinking of materials as, you know, or being people that just, manufacturers that just um, create products or uh, just products, but think more about like the whole material journey um, and how that supports environmental systems and social systems. Now, for me, obviously, it's, it's very obviously, it's very obvious to think about uh, regenerating ecosystems or biodiversity. I think I heard you also talking about the social aspect of it in regards to communities. Maybe you can um, give us an example uh, of what that could look like. Yeah, so the, the Fernando La Posse example that I gave is all about enriching communities, giving them financial, better financial opportunities, giving them um, better amenities, local amenities, improving their kind of global infrastructure and supporting them to flourish um, rather than taking all the time. It is a challenging transition, no doubt. Um, but let's say what you were talking about really is sort of the spare hat. And you're talking probably about a process that is not yet there yet to be um, scaled or mass produced. So this is really where we're um, sort of the guiding star. Yes, the guiding star. But there are people out there that are scaling up mm. now. So some of the examples we'll be showing will be um, more at the beginning. But we've tried to make sure we've included right across the Mm. whole exhibition there's going to be lots of examples of people who are actively scaling already mm. and embodying these principles. Now we talked a lot about um, really the transition itself, um, the processes and the function they have to serve in society or in the environment, but let's also break it down to colours. Mm -hmm. Since um, you already also presented colours, so um, how did you arrive at the specific colours that um, really reflect new sensitivity? How did you work with colours? This Yes, that was also a different uh, process than what we've been uh, usually doing. Um, so we really uh, talked about it, discussed a little about what is color and, and how do we see color as part of new sensitivity and color also in the future uh, of textiles, exploring how can we make color, what kind of new innovative solutions is out there uh, that can uh, supplement natural colors that we've been, been talking about. So it's really a lot of research into color, what colors are possible, what can we make, and how can we still then respect uh, our values in terms of environmental protection when we're also talking color? Because it cannot be that we're doing or making a fiber that is um, sustainable or circular, and then we are adding color that is not then. So we really looked into what the possibilities are, and it was a great uh, view to see that there were a variation. Um, and we also wanted some color that really struck and drove emotion because Color is an emotional driver also when we were talking with textiles. So they need to be part of this story with textiles. Um, and so it was uh, both and to really have some contrast in there with some subdued colors, but also some vivid and bright colors. And they primarily come from then bioengineered solutions. So it does really translate into very concrete aesthetics and color palettes in the end. And now, I guess, um, as with all changes or transitions, it's really important um, to, on the one hand, include all the stakeholders involved within the industry, but of course also take customers along, take the audience along. So how can you translate everything that you've been talking about into a meaningful story of material innovation, to tell that story behind a fabric or color actually, um, or even its regenerative qualities? Yeah, well, I think this is one of our biggest challenges, but like conscious consumers today are driven by understanding the regenerative stories behind the products that they sell. It's one of their reasons for purchasing something. So I think using physical and digital channels in order to share these stories and finding ways to 
help people to engage with them on an emotional level, but also making them very simple and accessible. It's really important that we share these messages in a way that people can understand things. Um, and also to make sure that we speak of the depth of the material journeys, but also um, think about uh, the digital ways in which we show these. So a really good example is Pangaea, who do the most amazing digital animations that are really engaging, but help to break things down so that people can understand them very easily. I also think that it's... Uh really a, a time right now where we have some stories to tell. We're not necessarily waiting for innovation. We did that five years ago or 10 years ago when we started talking about sustainable. We didn't have any alternatives in the textile industry, but we do now. So we really need to push these stories and tell these great textile innovators that is out there that has been in the lab for five to 10 years developing these new solutions. So it was really imperative to take that down um, decompress it to a more simple story and say so they're right here so uh, implement them. Now that's the perfect segue to talking about, about AI. You already started earlier obviously generative AI has been really one of the leading topics to talk about this year already but um, do you think that this is actually where it can also come into play as a tool to tell these stories or to really as you mentioned earlier, simplify the whole process and narrow it down for people to understand it or play with it? Yeah, definitely. And we're implementing that or having an installation at the trend space also where we're working with um, AI and creating a relation to it to textiles. But it's also important with AI to have this new sensitivity approach to it, to show consideration and respect when using it, also for the artist and everything that is going into this new uh, technology. So new sensitivity is just as important in relation to AI as it is within, um, within the textiles. So that's also the approach that we want to do it. But AI has the help of, you know, having all that information that a human brain cannot comprehend. So it can really help decompress also complex information. And that's what we're trying to then create and use AI as a tool. Um, just like we're using a calculator to, to you know, solve a big math uh, issue. So we're using AI uh, as the same thing to understand and make this more more simple that is complex out there with these new compositions within textiles. Well, I'm very happy I got to ask my personal questions here because I'm very passionate about these topics. I'm sure the audience is as well, so let's not take away much of much more time of them. But um, to me, I think um, the conclusion really is that it's um, it's not just where you can collect colors and textiles and move on. It's really something where you need to inform yourself, where you need to have a mind fit, mindset to play with it, to really engage um, with your producers, with your suppliers on how you can jointly move forward and um, make new sensitivity a reality. Um, and of course, Heim Textile is a perfect platform to do so. Um, but I think you've already been typing away with your questions. I could see already a nice set of questions coming in and I'll hand over to Yvonne to go through those. Thank you very much. I think it's been a very impressive presentation. I have got loads and loads of questions. Let's see how far we get. Um, I can actually sum up a couple of the questions because um, um, we talked a lot about the materials and how we can use them, how we recycle everything. Um, but what about the customers? So um, how can we include them in the journey? How can we convince them um, also to invest in um, the, the materials that are not that, um, but not inexpensive to say. So how can we take them into the journey? It's probably like the last question, isn't yeah. it? It's about creating really compelling stories that people can engage with, they can emotionally connect with, that are easy to understand, that make it really clear why we need to be buying these materials. Mm -hmm. But it's also about volume. So yes, price is, is a point with these new textile innovations, definitely. But the more volume we get, then the more then we can get you know, the price down and it reaches much more conventional uh, levels. So unfortunately, I think that um, changing consumer behavior is a long, very long draw to, to this um, and really showcasing maybe newer materials that is less harmful. I think that is, is a good way. 
And we do have a very concrete question, because um, in the home textile industry, there is still polyester. So we talk a lot about materials that are man-made fibers, um, not, uh, do not come from the nature. So the question is, how will the polyester or the recycled polyester, which is a man-made fiber, be supportive for the environment regeneration? Um, could you please elaborate a bit more on this part? So I think um, maybe you can start. Um, or what do we do with materials that are not uh, natural in, in its mm -hmm. way that has been produced? Well, I think that comes back to the way we talk about we're not completely moving away from the idea of circularity that we had as our theme last year. It's about incorporating that into like a wider set of principles. So still making sure that these are in closed loop systems and that we're really clever with the way that we recycle things and think about their life cycle. And perhaps they don't you know, keep getting um, turned into new garments. Maybe they get turned into other things as well. There's lots of clever ways to use plastics. Um, but we need to design systems that make sure that these things are not getting put in the sea, they're not getting put in the bin, that they're getting reused, remade into other things. Okay. You're nodding? You yeah, add yeah definitely. Or? But there are also, also these new uh, polyesters that has been embedded with these micro, uh, micro uh, groups and spots that can help them then biodegrade. Um, and, and that is only just the transitioning. Of course, it will be uh, much better if we come into these more um, uh, textiles that can more naturally biodegrade. But it's about getting textiles back to its anatomic uh, level trying to get into carbon or oxygen or whatever it, it comes from. Um, so we really need to have a look at these polyesters, recycle them, of course, as much as possible, keep them in, in the loop and not anywhere else, um, and then make them to last as much as possible. Okay. Um, well, I also have a very concrete question, so I just uh, picked this one out because um, we also have products, you know, final products with us at the, at the fair. So one question is how will the interior trends you just shown um, dictate bath linen trends in the upcoming season? How, so how will they affect the real products on the market at the end? Well, that is a good question, and that is part of this transformation that we are we are focusing on. We will have ready-made products at the trend space as well. We are going to have these what we call mood spaces of looking into where home textiles are within our home, within the bedding segment, for example, or within a wall and window. Um, but we are including those who live up to our sustainability uh, requirements, and then we are looking very much into our color combinations as a guide to how we can then frame that and then look in to the different kinds of, of trends that will elaborate um, from that. So we're guiding it uh, a little bit, but not as much uh, on the aesthetical side as we've done before, because we do think that there is a huge uh, message out there we want to convey. Okay, thank you. And then we've talked a lot about the materials and how they, they can be produced, um, how they can be colored. What about the design? I have uh, a question, where was it? Um, yes, since the trend seeks to be more of materials te textiles yet on the design part, how to converge these trends within the, the design? So when start thinking about the materials, I guess. Do you have any? Well, I just, again, I'd go back to looking at the way that you design something right from the beginning. So it's not about designing a product and then adding your color or pattern at the end. It's about thinking about that right from the beginning, designing systems that incorporate um, color materiality right from the first moment. And also looking at um, possible waste streams that we could refer to as value streams instead, um, as ways of taking what other people might consider waste products and using them in our um, design process. Okay. Applying design thinking also, what purpose does that new product fulfill? Um, can it address critical issues that we're looking into? Can it help us with climate change? What is it end of life? So design is a much broader process and really taking on this new sensitivity of showing consideration of why you're bringing this product in, into the world in the first place. So how is it helping? What is it made of? Design is so much more than what we're just looking at. Exactly. Um, well, I quickly have a look at our, our time, so I'm afraid we're kind of running out of time. There are a couple of questions left. Um, I just pick one more out and I think all the others we're going to um, answer afterwards. Um, 
the world is going towards sustainable products, but in the repeatedly changing environment, does this become a challenge? Changing environments? Meaning, me, I guess the environment around us is changing pretty repeatedly. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're talking about changes in the production, changes um, how we use colors and how we produce materials. Um, so you have this rapid changing environment and you have this process. The environment changes pretty fast, I guess, even faster than we can react. Mm -hmm. So how do you, do you see this challenge? Well, it brings up a lot more critical issues. I mean, and, and it shows us right in our faces of what it is that we are addressing. And again, yes, design process needs to look at these critical issues and, and help us address them. Yeah, I think that's the kind of whole idea of what we'll be presenting, regenerative design. It's about looking, as I said earlier, at materials as being dynamic and part mm -hmm. of living systems. And if we can do that right from the beginning, then we can adapt as we go along as well. We're much more agile to do that. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. Thank um, you. Thank you for joining us as well. Um, we keep your questions. The ones we haven't answered yet, we're going to answer afterwards. Um, thank you to all our guests. It's been a pleasure and to our speakers. Um, just a short reminder, we're going to have all the information you need on our website, the recording, all the beautiful pictures that were shown here, um, so you can download them as well. Um, thank you to the team backstage. Always a pleasure working with you guys. And um, if you can spare a couple of more minutes, because um, just once I stop talking, um, we're going to show you the trend movie. Um, which is really, really beautiful made, it sums everything up that was presented here. And um, yeah, let's stay in touch. Let us know how you like the trends. What do you think about it? Um, if you have any further questions, you know, just get in touch with my team and me. Um, we are more than happy to provide you with information. And um, we're going to see you around at Heim Textile. And I guess I can speak for all of us that we are all looking forward how the trends and the material, the future materials will come to life during Heim Textile. So until then, take care and bye bye. Feel the touch of nature. Talk to the people around you. Listen. Everything is changing, moving all at once. Connected, intertwined like a spider's net. Each affecting and enforcing the other. And so the textile industry takes on a new starting point to ensure a positive transformation for all. Bioengineered solutions, plant-based textiles and cutting edge technology pave the way for sustainable practices, heightened environmental awareness and considered product cycles, propelling the industry towards a promising future with an approach of new sensitivity.